So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 56. And we are still on the topic of Kundalini. And um, the topic really is, is on focusing on the mystery and the magic of Kundalini this, this week. We've gone through all of the different chakras and a um, little bit beforehand, we're starting to talk about, you know, how come the the our transition into the the higher dimensions this time is going so slow and it's actually i i actually just want to give an um explanation of why it is so slow uh, why it seemed to be so slow is actually going as fast as we possibly can and if we go any faster um, it actually you may not like how it is because i actually have a an um, episode of a Kundalini awakening very recently. And, uh, um, and I've had that before um, because I remember when I got a uh, reconnection, um, when, I, when I got reconnection energy, um, that process being done on me, I had a Kundalini awakening. Like, I didn't know that that was what it was at the time, but not, like going back and looking back in time, I realized that that was what it was because I was, I remember describing it for you guys um, a few times before already. I was lying in bed and all of a sudden this energy just comes through me and I started um, kind of uncontrollably moving and convulsing while I'm lying on my bed. It was... It was, um, I was not scared at all. The thing is, I was not scared at all. And I was just curious because I have no idea what this is, but it was just, my body was just moving, flat, uh, really uh, uh, thrashing around uncontrollably. And I have no idea what, what was going on, but I just know that I'm safe. I didn't have that fear in, in, in my mind. It was, I just know it was some energy that's going through me. And that was actually a Kundalini awakening. And I was um, convulsing in my bed, I think for, I don't know, two, three hours before I really got too tired and I just passed out. It was still um, going on. And I remember I had this distinct feeling that I'm not alone in my room, even though I was the only person in, in the house at the time. But I, I, um, I'm distinctly aware that there are other people around me. I couldn't see them. I'm not scared, but um, I just feel the presence of other beings around me. So that's also the hallmark of um, Kundalini awakening is that your senses have become so heightened that you start to see, um, you start to have your your third eye opening. You start to be able to sense um, different energies and you start to have uh, flashes of in, intuitive knowing. So that was what happened to me afterwards. Uh, I, I become, you know, um, strange. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's put it that way. Like I, all of a sudden I started um, knowing things, seeing things, feeling energy that, that, um, that I, I couldn't see it, but I know I can feel it. I know it's real because I can feel it. Whereas before, I, I didn't have any of those things. So that was, that was um, and that energy actually just every, every week, at first it, it come back every week, it, I would have one night where I would start to move around my bed. And um, so it started to be every week and then it, it got to be, you know, every other week and it slowed down and then once a month and then, um, got to be um, less frequent and then I have other things happening and the most recent episode that I have was actually one of the most violent ones like usually it, it was a very um, pleasant experience I was blissed out so that's also a hallmark of, of, of well not hallmark but you know if, if you have done um, your clearing enough then you can access bliss. But if you haven't quite done the, the clearing, then um, I, then, then it could be quite violent because if you have fear, then you know, you're gonna resist it, then it gets violent. But because the first time it, I, I didn't, I have no fear. 
because um and I, why did I have no fear? I just don't know. I have no idea. I just n knew that there's nothing to fear, even though um, I feel there are people in my room that I couldn't see, but I was not. I was not afraid at all. It was unexplicably. I was very calm you know, through the first time and and subsequent. Um, times it was like I still have no fear so I think because there was no fear so that's why um, my own experience of Kundalini awakening has been um, the blissful kind whereas there are actually um, Kundalini um, awakening that are, that is very um, disrupting like that I remember um listening to some <clears throat> some other people describing their own kundalini awakening that it was actually a very frightening experience because they have no idea what's happening to them and all of a sudden they have no control over their body so that was um really very fearful for some people they they resist it and fight it and the more they fight it the worse it becomes because it's it's an energy that cannot be stopped and um and is just blast through your neurology to clear anything that you're holding back and if you have fear then um you it's going to make you feel your life worse and um so that's that's part of the the kundalini <clears throat> and um <laughs> so that's the uh, okay so why we're not having why why is how come this um transition transitioning to the fifth dimension on earth seems to be going so slowly it's because our body has actually um we weren't just in 3d we were in a um we were in an artificially um engineered negative 3d so we were actually pretty low so that's why the energy has to like right now collectively we are all going through a kundalini awakening on a collective scale not just me not just uh, you all here but everyone in the world is going through this and some people um have chosen already that they don't want it yeah that's it i'm i'm out of here i don't want to to move on to the fifth dimension. So those people would, in one way or another, um, create a scenario where they can move off to um, move aside and, and not go through this transitioning. And um, our body, because this, even though the, the 3D support is already cut and there's no more 3D support, However, we still holding those programs within our body. And so the energy now that is going through our body is actually assisting our body to blast through those blockages. That's why on the, the, the world screen right now, it's, it's not a pretty show. That's why you see things like what's happening in, in the U.S. It's... And <laughs> it's hilarious. Let's not even talk about what's happening in the U.S. As in Canada, look at our prime minister. <laughs> it's absolutely a it's the 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 amount of um, corruption. The it's the craziness. It's just it's mind boggling. Why? It's because everything that is hiding behind uh, cobwebs, hiding in the, the, the shadows is all of a sudden when the Kundalini energy, um, when the light is on, we see all of them now. It's it been happening um, like for the longest time. We just didn't notice it. And now our eyes are completely opened and we see what it is. That's really, you know, how politics is being played right in front of our eyes it's absolutely corrupt it's just it's a joke and so 
what we are seeing now is really all of the the things that are hiding that are blocking being blasted out in the open so that we can all see it and then decide collectively we want this no or uh, if we don't want this what else do we want and we start to create that so it is going as fast as we can nobody is holding us back there's no holding back Everything is being blasted um, for as fast as we, a human mind can actually um, process. So like that, that is my, my read on what's going on. It's like, if it goes any faster, would you be able to process all of the, like the, there's more darkness coming up. There's more things coming up that's being played. Uh, to to try to stop this this uh, Kundalini rising, but there's no stopping, and so at some point we are all going to have to make a choice. Okay, we don't want this anymore. What are we willing to do? How are we going to create a new structure? And there are already people that are doing that in the background. They are already planning things. They are already. Um, starting to build maybe not in reality not not in 3d but they are starting to um, map it out in their mind already okay this government is not working so how do you want government to actually work if i ask you right now do you know exactly how you want government to actually work or are you think that whatever it is right now is okay so you know it's that it's ask yourself are you, do you know exactly what you want? And if you don't know yet, then that is part of the reason why we're going so slow. Comments? Questions? Yeah, so what was the bad one that you had, bad experience? Why did you... Oh, it was, um, I, so um, I've been, so that, that experience, that one with the experience was, I actually felt all of the energy that's moving through my, my body is, is like, so, um, how should I put it? It was like, you know, when you're in a a world, uh, um, like, so if I'm standing against a, the, the, what is it? So if you're in the shower, all of a sudden you turn on a very powerful um, stream of water and the water is just, coming at me wave after wave after wave and the thing is I was holding against it with like I was because I like at that moment I was really um in fear it was like so much energy going through me and I was like if I don't hold on maybe I will explode I think that was really the mind um that was going through my mind whereas when I was on my bed and the energy was more gentle I was like I didn't even though my body was moving um, uncontrollably I was not in fear but that time the energy was going so strong that I thought I'm going to explode if I don't hang on to my body that was that was the the most violent experience that I've had with um with the, the kundalini awakening and i was i did get through it i did get through it it started to to subside and i didn't die so but i do know that okay please by yourself next time make it more gentle and wait until i'm in bed because i was not in bed at that time yeah. so when i was in bed and i uh, it was much easier for me to receive the energy. Like usually, um, the energy would come through me when I'm in bed. But 
that time I was not in in bed. It was still early in the day, well, earlier in the day, and I was actually out. I was um, going out, and all of a sudden, this energy was coming through me, and I was just hanging on for dear life. Uh -huh. So that's so it can be like that as well. What do you feel afterwards? I feel absolutely exhausted, spent. Uh, <laughs> so like you couldn't go out that day when you felt like that. Yep. <laughs> couldn't re yeah. So so but you know, you never know. You never know when the energy has to come in that strong. Mm -hmm. And there are some nights, um, the energy was so strong I think my head was, you know, I think there's a hole in my head. That's how it feels like. It feels like, okay, there's a hole in my head. <laughs> and then the energy was so strong. It it feels like I'm like, um, it, it really feel, I was really feeling the pole. It's, it's like there's something solid that's sticking out of my head. That's what it feels like. But there was nothing there. You were funneling the information. Yeah. Okay. Your advice is just to relax into it. <laughs> it happens. Or lay down. But not all of us will be feeling like that. Everyone experienced Kundalini in their own unique ways. <laughs> Most of the time, it's blissful, happy. Um, and uh, sometimes it's not. So. <laughs> But anyway, so um, Kundalini. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, let's see. So Kundalini, what else do I need to talk about? Well, let's see. I've mentioned that Kundalini. Is, um, okay, so actually I want to ex explain what some of the other hallmarks of a Kundalini uh, awakening as well is when, when the Kundalini energy is round, I feel that I'm in love. I think the, the, the best expression is I feel like I'm um, absolutely in love, but it's not the romantic, I, I love a particular person kind of love. It is in love with life itself. It's like there is no one can say anything to me that is going to drag me down. I just feel love for everything. Everyone, everything, like nothing bad can happen to me when um, this Kundalini energy was going through me, except for that one time. <laughs> But the the most of the time the Kundalini energy when I'm in it it feels like I'm just in love with the whole world with life itself nothing can can draw me down it's um, there's n nothing nowhere no one that I'm not in love with I'm simply in love with life with myself, with the whole universe. So that's also a part of the Kundalini as well. And it's like I'm turned on, completely turned on. And um, like usually I'm, I'm a much more mellow person. I don't feel that, even though I may not be like a scheming person, but I usually feel more calm and... Uh, mellow but when I when that that kundalini energy is really um taken over me it's like I just feel oh I'm just in love with you it's, it was really like I'm on drugs it's like I, I taken I don't know I've not taken drugs so I have no idea what kind of drugs makes you feel like that but it's it's that it's like everything looks good everything is good nothing bad can can ever happen so that is um for me what kundalini feels like 
I'm not saying that everyone feels it this way, but um, that's usually how I know I'm high on Kundalini energy is when everything goes smoothly and, you know, I can do, I feel I can do anything. I can be with anyone. I can go anywhere and, and know for a hundred percent that I will have fun because that's just the energy that I'm in. So um, that's total bliss. Yeah, total bliss, and and not and it's um it's a very active bliss. Usually, we think I think of bliss as being you're just happy, but no, it is an active happy. It is a happy that oh, I'm curious. I want to know more. That kind of bliss. So, but when you see things, do you see them differently, like objects around? sky the sun do you feel them also i feel them a lot more i feel um like i actually feel connected to everything yeah. that kind that is the the feeling and do i see most of the time i don't see sometimes i do so so sometimes um, usually when I'm out in nature, I can see uh, the colors as being much more vibrant than mm. normally. So if it's if it's a green, it would be like emerald green. Like it, it would be a very um, beautiful green. And if it's red, it will be, you know, the most intoxicating shade of red. So that's what that thing that is like. So it's a, it's a good thing. It's <laughs> it's um it's a creation energy. It's when you when you're connected with everything and you just love everything, just creating something is just so easy because there's no blockage at all. You think of something and that that it will happen. Um I remember one time. <laughs> it was actually, um, yeah, uh, I think I, I I told you guys or um, the story was, I think I was just standing in a bus stop and I was thinking about something and, and I was looking at the car, thinking of something and all of a sudden the car actually just, um, like just draw in and with the, the guy was trying to pick me up I was like oh okay this is this is too this is so quick it was like I think about it and it's done so creation was just so quick <laughs> and that's Kundalini energy for you and the good thing <laughs> is we actually can like we Collectively, that's what we are doing. We are going through that Kundalini awakening process. The energy that's coming in, um, sometimes the energy coming in is so strong that, um, yeah, <laughs> we can all feel it. Some people, sometimes we can't even sleep because the energy was just so invigorating. We can't sleep. Or maybe it's the opposite. So everyone experiences it differently. Maybe the opposite is, I just cannot sleep enough. You're always tired because you, there's so much um, in your body to process. So hmm. that too is Kundalini. Well, why do you call it Kundalini? How do you know what's Kundalini energy. It can be any energy, right? Yeah. Um, the the description is the, uh, because when I look at how other people describe Kundalini, that's exactly what they describe. Okay. Is um, I was actually there was a saint, um, Saint Teresa of Silius or something. I you know, pardon my French. Yes. So she, um, she is a, a nun, uh, a saint, 
and she had a Kundalini awakening. And so she actually wrote in, I think she wrote a book about it or wrote a diary that, that got published that really described what happened to her. And um, I think some, at the time, some people suggested maybe she was possessed by the devil or something. <laughs> but um, her own description of it was that it was a blissful experience, even though she had no control of her body, it was just convulsing. And that was exactly what I felt like. My body, I have no control over it. I was absolutely, and um, like when I don't resist it, I can actually feel the bliss. And there was actually uh, no fear. And even though I, I can sense other being in the room. And she also mentioned that she could see her the, the blood in her body flowing through. She could actually see it. Oh. And and that was what she was seeing. It was not her own blood. It was actually she was seeing her own um she was seeing her own light body. Uh, you know the, the light body that's 13 inches in front of us. So mm -hmm. that light body. Mm -hmm. So she was she was a sudden she was able to see her own light body and she could see that, you know, like all the, the energy that's flowing through her. So that was the, um, so that description. So all of that kind of made me realize that all those experiences that I've had, uh, it was actually Kundalini uh, awakening. I was asking because Cor Cornelius always keeps saying uh, that he did not have a Kundalini awakening. It was his consciousness awakening. It's not the same. And he got very upset with somebody who interviewed him, called it the Kundalini Awakening. Because okay. he specifically <laughs> told him not that is not what it was. And he still put the title in the YouTube video as Kundalini Awakening. Because that's all that man knew probably of other people's experience talking to him. You know? mm -hmm. So he couldn't understand what Cornelius has gone through is totally different. I have no idea what he yeah, he, is well, yeah. <laughs> his, his, he can he says he can feel every blade of grass wherever it is in the world. He can feel everything like as though it is part of him. Yep. That is how feeling of connected to people all all over the world. Like yeah, you can connect. That anywhere. feeling of connection, yes. That you is, have that. Oh yeah, if yeah. you connect it. That's why I was asking you. How do you feel about the nature and things? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, connected. Like and um. <clears throat> Um, and also I want to mention that Kundalini awakening is in the stages. So yeah. the, so yeah, the the most obvious stage is awakening of the heart center. So that's where the connection is. So that's why the being able to feel the love, that that quality of love. That's that's one layer. And then as we go more into it, it actually goes to our throat chakra. And then it goes up to our third eye, where our third eye is actually connected to all of creation. Because we are, so, so we're getting into oneness. Mm -hmm. So it's different layers of awakening, the Kundalini awakening. It's not just one layer is a few layers of awakening as well. So in the end, it is really to um, for us to remember that we are one. So 
I tell people too like that, you know. That's what, we're all like human and why can't we? Uh, today there was a beautiful video of in Japan where the deer are sheltering along with the people and it's a big rainstorm, like mm -hmm. on a porch, a big white veranda. And people are there and they're trying to photograph all the deer and they just, they're just sitting calmly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. So it's, there really is no separation. We, the separation is um, really created, of the, the disconnection. Created by the ego mind. Yeah. yeah. That's, it's, it's a separation that exists in our mind and in our um, upbringing, I would say. Yeah, and we we forgot that we are actually part of oneness. So, and now we are going through the the remembering that we are all one, and, and uh, that's why right now <laughs> we still have war going on. We have people trying to elbow other people. <laughs> so, how about that? That's that's a face. That's all those things that's that the old pattern. Yeah. go through. All patterns and beliefs that we have to give up. Yep. And um, so we are going through that. And how how fast do we want to go through it? Um, or how slow do you want to go through it? And that's really up to each one of us. Okay, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, okay, I just want to actually talk about. So, how do we facilitate or um, make it go faster? I am um, this. Two things we can do um, because, or at least two things that I can think of that anyone can do. The first one really is to um, do it within first. So within yourself, like, like, never mind what other people are doing, is within yourself, really uh, let go of what is blocking yourself from being able to look at someone else and and feel that oneness with them and be feel that connection with them and um so that is something that you can do anyone can do is to really look at someone else and just mentally even if you don't feel it in this moment just mentally um say to yourself that you know just imagine that person being a part of you how do you and and just allow that person to be a part of you just feel the connection with that person and and then just um start to do more for example doing more i mean you know not just thinking about your own family as being part of you but you know random stranger on the on the bus a random stranger um, on on the sidewalk, and then also think of more people. Maybe not so not just the people that are around you in the same city. You think of other people that's in other places in the world, and think of them as being part of you as well. So as as much as you or as often as you want to do that exercise um that's really up to you how fast do you want this to go is um how much do you are you willing to go through that transformation yourself and also to i remember when um when i first um, do meditation is meditating with pure love. 
because the Kundalini, what it actually does is it actually bringing in pure love energy. So it is really bringing in pure love energy and using that pure love energy to blast through the blockages in our body. And when I first do that, is you know, breathe in the the love energy, and as you as we all breathe out, then we let go of anything and everything that we don't that no longer serve us. So it, for the longest time, I've been doing that, and I think it was um, last Sunday. All of a sudden, what came to me was is um, because some somebody my one of my clients asked me so because when I was working with her she she mentioned that she she couldn't feel pure love like when I when I say breathe in pure love she couldn't even um, fathom what pure love feels like in in her body and so it actually got me thinking. I don't know what pure love feels like either because um, yes, I do. I did have some Kundalini um, awakening experiences and I know what bliss feels like in my body. So I'm lucky in that way, at least. Like, I don't know whether that is pure love. Maybe it's as pure as my body can, can feel it, but at least I have some reference However, some people, they have no reference of what that is. And I thought, oh, okay, maybe. So I have to be more considerate. And then actually, the, um, when I think about it more, I actually, um, there was just an excuse. Like I realized that that was just an excuse. And um, because we all have that memory of pure love in our body we may not be consciously aware of it but we have that we have that because within our dna there is actually angel dna in it as well Ang angelic i should say angelic it's it's really defined um parts of within our dna there is divinity already woven into it so when we say that we don't remember it, it's it's only um, okay. She's <clears throat> just trying to mute. Oops, sorry, muting the wrong person. Okay, great. <clears throat> so it's um when we, where was I? Okay, so actually within our DNA, there is um, divine energy in it already. It's not, it's not something that is foreign to us. Um, at, on some level, we actually know what it feels like. We may not um, know it consciously. We, we may not be able to describe it in words. However, we do know it. And when we, when we say we don't know, we don't know how that feels like. It's actually just our, um, we're just trying to convince ourselves that we don't know. Or in other words, it's an excuse to, to not allow us to experience that. It's, it's somewhere within our DNA. And all we have to do is really trust and allow for that memory to come out. It is in our body. Like even when we are, when we are first born, we have that feeling already. Because we came, when we, when we first come into this world, we're just a baby. So we only know bliss. That's all we know. And then you know, later on, we, we learn other things. But when we first, when we're first born, we know bliss already. 
we are um, we are in bliss and we know bliss. So our body actually has that experience in our in our memory. It may have been a long time. It's uh, it's been a while since I was born. So, <laughs> but it's there, and it is. So if we, if I say, oh, I don't know it, I don't remember, you know, that was uh, too many years ago. It's it's just my mental blockage. I'm just trying to give an excuse to not remember it. Um, so if you find yourself thinking that you don't know what pure love feels like, then um, know that that is just an excuse. And when you're ready, when you recover it from your your ego mind, it says, I really don't know. I I am not joking. I really don't know. But you know, if you if you really remember, like your baby, you know bliss. That's if you look at a baby now, it's like that's all they know. First day they were born, that's all they know. So you have that memory within this body. So all you have to do now is just trust that when you <clears throat> allow yourself to recall that experience and when you let go of all the excuses then you will start to be able to feel it again so that's um and also it's not just about letting go of what my does not support my body anymore it's actually um when we start to truly take no excuse and really feel in our body, allow us ourselves to feel in the body what bliss, what pure love feels like. That feeling is a vibration that um, that the, our whole environment can feel as well when we let go of our own mental block that I've never experienced pure love, so I therefore I don't know what it feels like. So and that's my uh, my spiel on that. Uh, I would say like pure love is giving something to somebody without any expectations. It's the 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 love a mother feels for a child most of us like that is like no matter what they do we're still going to love them i would say that is like pure love i would describe it like that you could describe it like even if you don't feel it and then you find analogies and that's how you can explain it to people who say they can't understand mm -hmm. okay And then you give, that is in a way, it's kindness also. That's where kindness also comes in, where you give and receive without any conditions. <laughs> yeah. Like you give some unfortunate person on the street, you give them something. And no matter what, how big or small it is, they thank you for it. And to me, that's the biggest happiness at that moment. <laughs> yeah. I've been blessed to have that, that total love, that, that bliss of just being part of someone else. And it's just the most incredible experience ever. Um, it just takes over your entire body and it just feels like I didn't know what it was at the time. So this has actually been helpful. It kind of helped me understand what that experience was. And it was, I was, I was with another woman that I didn't know very well. And it was kind of a really interesting experience, which I don't need to share with all of you, but suffice it, suffice it to say that 
I think she could feel the love that I had for her. And it was just the most, I can't even describe it. Incredible feeling. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's what we have to do more of. Like we have to find more people to do that with. Yep, that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we're here. So it's just a matter of not listening to the brain, uh, the mind, ego, and going with your heart. Because your heart feels, really feels. Like... Yeah. <clears throat> yes. And um, And also it's, I think um, not listening to your mind is um, it's one thing because our mind <laughs> is kind of conditioned. It's been conditioned for a long time. So sometimes when there's just too, too many conversations going on is to not to not listen to it. It's actually just to observe. Like even when you know that you are triggered, even when you know that you know yeah this is this is my ego talking i'm not not the not the true self talking even when you know it like most of the time we may not even be aware of it but, but even but when you become aware of it it's to just like don't don't judge it and just just observe how your ego is um trying to <laughs> to play <laughs> in the way that only an ego can play. So so just observe um, the, your mind without being a part. It's it's being able to observe how your mind is playing, what um what story is trying to spin, observe it, but not being a part of the story. Because when you're a part of the story, you don't realize that you are spinning a story. Uh, when you get when you get to um, be aware that oh okay I'm just spinning the story now that's it's just it's just a conditioning that is spinning the story but still allow it to keep spinning <clears throat> and just observe the spinning of you know how how genius you are be to be able to think of this story um, and just and just no judgment i think i think that's something that we can do as well um especially when we are um observing what's going on in in the world today it, there's a lot of obs like really <clears throat> crazy things going on is uh don't is to just observe the craziness without being part of the craziness um, when you can um, be aware that oh, okay, this is I'm spinning again. So let me let me just watch the spinning without being a part of um, the the eye that's doing the spinning. So I think that <clears throat> I think that is the most powerful thing we can do is to become conscious that way. Is to know that yeah, we are we are. Um, we are spinning and just have no judgment to all of that. See, the mind goes by experience, so it only remembers experiences, what it's what we have experienced. So its job is to keep us safe, like yeah. So that is why it keeps stopping you from trying something new. Mm -hmm. Because for the heart. We'll say, okay, go for it. Like that's why we have the conflict between us when we say, should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Should I not? Because it's the mind and the heart that is in conflict. The mind says, no, no, you did it before, and this and this and this this happened. So it brings the whole story out, and that sometimes can hold you back. But if you are like in the with all that training, with the meditation and everything, we are realizing more and more that that is its job it's just doing its job but we don't have to take the path that always that it says 
Yeah. <clears throat> and when the new thought comes, we think it came from the mind, but I think it comes from comes from the heart. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, also it can come from the the heart. Yes, the heart, the gut, uh, even the sacral is very strong. Yeah. And and also um, be able to feel into it as well. Whether mm -hmm. is this something from the heart or is this something from other sources? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes we see other people doing something and you just feel like you want to follow them. That is the old pattern. That is why we are in this situation. Because we just followed like sheep, like you know, one led and everybody followed. Nobody questioned why. Why are we going in this direction? Why not in that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's where we have to keep breaking up, break up those patterns. Yeah, it is. This is really about being conscious. Conscious, yeah. Aware conscious. that you know, yeah, being aware mm -hmm. that you know what is our. Um, and also to not just check in with our uh, mind, but check in with our heart as well. Being able to balance both because there's a time to follow and there's a time to not follow. So then how to balance that. Uh, I think yesterday I missed Cornelius, uh, but from the recording, I'm trying to write down what he had a conversation with Buddha, and uh, Buddha said so many wise words. Mm -hmm. There are 20 phrases like he's given. And it's so true, like each one makes so much sense. But it's very particularly put. It's the like the tapestry of life. Every thread uh, counts. Let's I'll just read it to you. Uh, and I type it all up and send it. To... <laughs> it's, it's so nicely done. Yeah. In a tapestry, in tapestry of life, each thread contributes to the masterpiece of your story. Even if you look at a painting or a picture or embroidered thing, every thread counts, yeah, in the right place. If it's not there, the picture wouldn't come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very true. And then something about flaws, even. Your scars are not flaws, but stories of survival. Because we get, keep getting caught up that, oh, we did something wrong, we did something wrong. But we don't realize that that experience is going to teach you something to do better next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's never a mistake, it's a learning. Learning, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful, yeah. Success is not measured by destination, but by the growth in, in the journey. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so... I'll type it up and send it to everyone, yes. Okay. Uh, so okay. um, that's, that's actually all I have to say about the Kundalini. Okay. Unless you guys have any other questions. It's a beautiful subject. And Kundalini, <coughs> excuse me, it's going on our spine, right? And then up. Yeah. Where is the chakra? Chakras. Mm -hmm. So when you felt all that energy, it was go all over your spine, up and down. Uh, 
Um, it will. What I feel was I, I feel like um, I'm in a prana too, or like I'm in some sort of a cocoon where energy was just flowing all around me. So that's how I feel it. Um, it's. Yeah, so so energy was just in between my like a little over on the top of my head to all the way through um it's like my whole body was sitting in was lying in um a place where energy just flow freely. So sometimes it can feel like this. It can feel like that. Um, sometimes I just feel it in the top of my head where it's really strong. It's like there's an energy drill that's trying to drill down <laughs> my head. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so you get it. All, all, um, like sometimes it's stronger. Sometimes it's, it's more gentle. So. What is behind your thing today, your screen? Oh, <laughs> let me move away. Oh, that, that is what that yoga is. Pose. Yep. What's it called in the yoga pose? Yes, I forgot the name of that. But mm -hmm. um, I think that is one of Shakti's uh, pose or, yeah. Yeah, trusty. standing, standing with one foot, and actually, usually more arms. But this is actually a person, not Shakti, so that's why there's only one pair of arms. But mm -hmm. I've seen um, um, Shakti with many arms that's and beautiful. just one standing on one foot. So that's why I picked this. Yeah, it's unusual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's um. I I haven't I, I don't really know but I suspect that um, Kundalini is not just about Kundalini um, because Kundalini is really about a system of energy and like when we think of Kundalini um, like we do know that there is Kundalini is earth energy that's coming up but then there's also the central meridian, which is the um, cosmic energy coming down. So my understanding of Kundalini is actually not just the energy going up. It is also um, Kundalini energy going up to meet the cosmic energy as well. So it's really both. When both are... The, each one, the central meridian has a particular purpose. And the kundalini, which is energy coming up, also has another purpose. So it is really the, the balancing of those two in the human body. That is really, um, for me, is, is the whole process. And I know that in the, in the olden days, uh, kundalini and the central meridian it's actually all just one and one energy. They they are at the same place in the body, but um, now it's in a different place. So now the kundalini is more along the spine, where central meridian is really in the middle of the body. My understanding is kundalini. When we think when we think of kundalini um, awakening, is really central meridian and the kundalini energy. Too both of them coming together. No, I can be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know, but um, that's... No, see if we explain that in one of our classes, I think, uh, that they got separated because of all the things that we have gone through. Yeah. 
I know. We're trying to bring it closer and closer to the. Oh, okay. I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, he gave the command Kundalini and Central Meridian merge activate. You remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I remember that, but I, I forgot that he, he mentioned it was the control that, that was separating the two, that separated the two. But, uh, but I do know that, yeah, they at one point, those two were the same. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for remembering that. <laughs> Okay, so are we ready to do some meditation? Yeah, that's right. ready. Anything, anything else that you guys want to mention about Kundalini? We good for tonight? Okay. <laughs>